What's going on, guys? It's Ryan with Michigan Storm Chasers. An action-packed next 36 hours for us here across portions of Michigan. We have aurora potential. We also have severe weather potential as well as flooding potential to go over with you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. Before I do dive in, though, I just want to give a quick plug to our Patreon page. We do have quite a bit of information over there that's not posted publicly. Exclusive daily forecast, winter predictions, live chat so you can speak with us if you want that option. It's all available on our subscription-based service, Patreon. Not required, totally optional. It is much appreciated. Feel free to check it out, patreon.com slash forward slash Michigan Storm Chasers. Link is in the description. So today, Sunday, August 4th, we have, again, hot and humid conditions here across the state. It'll only be increasing, getting worse into Monday. All right, so SPC outlook for today. The entire lower peninsula and parts of the eastern UP are within a general thunderstorm category, meaning pop-up cells are possible across the state. Models don't really show too much in the way of anything happening, but the environment is definitely there. If we can get enough lift for storms to take off, we could definitely see a storm or two across the state. Models for today do show the radar being quite quiet. Minus the exception of the UP and perhaps northern lower later on this evening. So mainly today, dry. Tonight into the overnight into Monday morning, that will increase. Now remember, SPC outlooks here are valid up until 8 a.m. the next morning. So this is valid from 8 a.m. this morning on Sunday to 8 a.m. Monday morning before the Monday outlook takes effect. So that means we have an entire overnight period of shower and storm potential potentially to get through. Models do increase the coverage of storms into the overnight hours, especially for northern lower. We see a nice band here of showers and storms taking shape at 2 in the morning up there toward Gaylord, Houghton Lake area. Those are going to sag and drift southeastward as the morning goes towards sunrise. And more development possible as we get towards sunrise. And then our attention then turns to Monday. We get into Monday morning past 8 o'clock. We have a severe risk for Monday in place. It is a marginal risk at this current moment. There is a slight risk that extends to our east and to our west, but it skips Michigan. You can see the areas in yellow there in that level two slight risk. Could we be upgraded? We might be. Let's go ahead and dive right into this. So the marginal risk is in place for tomorrow, Monday, August 5th. Looking at the models, we are going to see a lot of uncertainty here. We discussed this last night on our Facebook page. We are going to have two things to watch. How much rain is there going to be? How much cloud cover is there going to be? And how unstable is the atmosphere going to be? The reason I say that is because these morning rain showers here that are going to be in the area may try to zap our instability. And if that happens, the severe threat then goes down. But if we can recover after this rain, which the models do show happening, a severe risk may take shape. Now, looking at the model here, this is at noon, just some lingering showers still down by Ann Arbor, Lansing areas. Those are going to move out by afternoon, would become clear. And then our attention then turns to an incoming shortwave and low pressure system off to our west. We have cells popping up across the 94 corridor there at 6 p.m. tomorrow evening. We also have additional development off to the west here across, portion, across parts of Wisconsin and Minnesota. But I want to take note of these cells popping up ahead of that main wave that's coming toward us. Any of these cells that pop up do carry, do carry severe potential into Southeast Michigan as we get toward that evening time frame. So that's kind of like round one. Round two would then come later on the evening. That's more uncertainty just because it arrives late, overnight time frame, less instability to work with, so on and so forth. So I do think there is a threat for overall severe weather tomorrow evening, roughly from about 5 p.m. and after. I do think there's potential for some to linger into the overnight hours, but the chances as we get later on the evening then go down. The overall synopsis, though, is there's going to be a lot of rain coming in with this system, though. This is a, quite a bit of rain. It's fairly slow moving, not too, you know, stationary, but it's, it's moving, but not very fast. That can cause some flooding potential. So as a result, we do have that marginal risk in place. Sorry, that's for today. Here's tomorrow's marginal risk for severe weather. Damaging winds, your primary concern, not going to rule out a hail. Uh, large hail report, or perhaps a brief tornado if storms can get going. But also, in addition to this, we do have our WPC outlook here for excessive rainfall here. We've got a marginal risk for pretty much the entire lower part of Michigan, 
with a slight risk for excessive rainfall up there toward Manistee, Ludington, perhaps Traverse City, that area over to Mount Pleasant in yellow. That's going to be your excessive rainfall. Could see some flash flooding across that area, across the entire state, really, but mainly just because that heavy rain moves in overnight. It's going to be a slight risk area there in north central lower Michigan. After that, we do look a little bit more so drier for Tuesday, but some storm chances do linger, especially further south. We do have a severe risk in place to our south across Indiana and Ohio. Majority of anything strong or severe should stay south of us. Would not be shocked to see a couple thunderstorms on Tuesday throughout that south central lower Michigan portion of the state. So overall synopsis, tomorrow's severe event. Today will be pretty much dry except for overnight. Tomorrow's severe event stationed after 6 p.m. dependent on how much instability we can build. Would be concerned primarily for damaging winds. Large hail and a brief tornado should not be ruled out quite yet. There are low concerns, but I don't want to rule those out just yet because we have a little bit of some stuff to watch as far as wind shear goes. Uh, some turning with height potentially. So we'll watch it. We'll update you guys tonight. We'll have a briefing tonight at 7 or 8 o'clock or so to talk about it. And then obviously tomorrow, if need be, we'll have more briefings and also live coverage of severe weather. If need be, then Tuesday will be drying off. Wednesday and onward does look pleasant in terms of better temperatures as well as lower humidity. So look forward to mid to late in the week upcoming. Now, that's your severe and rain forecast. We do have potential for Aurora tonight. We have finally been impacted by our energy. We kind of watched for the past 48 to 72 hours. It finally impacted us last night. We do have a G1 warning in effect right now. It did reach G3 levels earlier this morning, just after sunrise. Go figure. Now, the chances of Aurora happening into tonight do look okay, but this data has to hold out. We have like 12 hours to go still, 10, 12 hours. It will likely start to gradually weaken with time. So we're going to be racing time here as we get towards sunset. But I do think there's potential for statewide Aurora tonight based on current data. It's just got a hold. and That's a big uncertainty. Regardless, I do think there's potential, good potential for Aurora in northern lower Michigan as well as the UP. The only question here is cloud cover. So cloud cover that right now does look to be on the mixed bag type of uh, scale. What I mean by that is some models show excessive cloud cover. Some models show breaks. Go ahead and check your skies tonight. All right, so this is the RDPS model, the gem model, we call it. This has cloud cover maps showing black as clear skies and white as clouds. So this is into the evening. Here is sunset, northern lower Michigan, as well as the UP, scattered to a few clouds there. Further south there across southeast Michigan, perhaps southern Michigan in general, mostly in the clear. But as you get toward that overnight period, those clouds do kind of fill in there. But northern lower, very extreme toward like we'll say Mackinac and perhaps very Southern, perhaps the Thumb region as well in this model does have clear skies. So overall synopsis here, clear skies, potentially breaks into clouds, potentially, but there will be clouds tonight likely. Just gotta be a matter of timing it just right. And I can't really get too specific on areas, but overall models do show cloud cover being somewhat of a concern, but not it's not gonna be a completely cloud over forecast. Other model here, the HRRR does show more so in the way of clouds in Northern lower in the Falls UP. But notice a big old gap there across majority of the southern and central portions of lower Michigan, especially eastern lower Michigan, in some clear skies there. And this is at sunset. Then as we get into the evening, midnight time frame, after midnight, clouds working from the west. So overall, if there's going to be statewide aurora, I do think the southeastern and perhaps east central parts of the state have the best shot there for aurora. I, I do think there's broken cloud cover possibilities elsewhere. It's just right now, southeast Michigan, all the way up from the Thumb down to Detroit, over to Lansing area, does have that best shot to see anything tonight if it's strong enough to see at all. We'll have updates on our page. Stay tuned to that. Overall, very busy, active next 48 hours or so. We'll be tracking it all here and have updates on our page for you guys. Stay tuned for that. That's it for this video. Before I head out, one last sponsor here. Shout out to our sponsor, Cats Roofing and Siding, based out of Lansing and Battle Creek greater metro areas they cover a majority of south central michigan so if you need roofing siding gutters windows call cats roofing and siding 517-485-9886 you will not regret your decision to give them a chance at your home improvement and restoration needs so with that being said 
Link for them is in the description. We'll see you guys next time here, likely tonight as well as perhaps tomorrow morning for more briefings and updates in regards to Aurora, severe and flooding potential here in the next 36 hours at Michigan Storm Chasers.